today we're going to start out with a really awesome recipe. I know the holidays are hard for people, right? Because you've got what's everywhere, sugar, lots of fats, unhealthy fats, um, lots of salt, lots of junk food. And um, I know that I was raised thinking, OK, you've just got to eat. There's two reasons I ate. One, because I was hungry. And two, because the food was sitting in front of me. And that, I was just conditioned that if the food's sitting in front of you or if you're hungry, just eat whatever's there. And um, this is a new paradigm. This is a paradigm where you choose what you eat to determine how your health is going to be and how you're going to feel. So um, I just want to talk really quickly, especially for the new people that haven't been here before. There's some foods that contribute to disease, and there's some foods that contribute to health. And it's really important to know which is which so you can start making an educated decision. I'm going to go through this list really quickly. But if you want to learn more, I've got, it's called a Getting Started Guide. And in the Getting Started Guide, it has all this information plus everything else that I teach in all the other classes you haven't been to yet. So if you're interested in the Getting Started Guide, it's $5. And it's like 30 pages of all the basic information about what's healthy, what's not healthy, how to prepare your grains and beans and nuts and seeds. And it's just a really valuable um, little booklet to help you get started. If you want that, it's $5. You can talk to the person that's at the door after class if you want to get that. Um, but I'll go through it really quick. And um, so the first thing that we need to stay away from, because it's very disease producing, is um, hydrogenated oils, partially hydrogenated oils, and any kind of vegetable oil. So that's your safflower oil, peanut oil, soy, canola, any of those vegetable oils that you get in the store. Those are all very disease promoting. Um, to replace those, we want to pick things like um, raw, unprocessed, um, virgin coconut oil, or extra virgin olive oil. And there's some certain rules to picking oils and how you should process them, and all that's in the Getting Started Guide. Um, the second thing we need to stay away from is sugars. So high fructose corn syrup, sugar, regular corn syrup, any kind of um, artificial sweetener. The sweeteners I use that are made from whole food ingredients or raw local honey, some um, organic whole maple syrup, sometimes a little bit of raw agave nectar, depending on if you're diabetic, maybe a little bit of xylitol, which is not a whole food, but it's good for the diabetic transition. Um, and um, there's a couple other sweeteners that work that are more whole food uh, substitutes for sugar. The other thing is chemicals, so any kind of flavors, additives, colorings, preservatives, um, phosphates, nitrates, any kind of fertilizers or pesticides, all of these kinds of chemicals are very disease promoting. And what we want to replace that with is natural flavorings like um, flavor extracts like vanilla and almond extracts, sea salt or natural salt that has not been refined cayenne pepper, black pepper, we've got essential oils that you can flavor food with. There's lots of other flavors and natural things we can use to preserve and flavor food. Um, the other thing is dairy, wheat. Uh, these are like highly allergenic foods that most people have a negative reaction to, and it's good to get them out of your diet at least for a little while. Um, so um, any kind of animal products, meat, fish, eggs, especially if they're factory farmed. So I'm not talking about grass-fed, you know, organic, free pasture-raised stuff. I'm talking about the factory farmed fish, chicken, eggs, meat, milk, anything that's farmed on a factory. Also, any wheat products, any products that have um, non-organic peanuts in them. Um, so these are soy products and corn products. So these are products that most people have allergic reactions to because of the way they're processed or farmed or produced. Um, so that's just a quick rundown of the do's and the don'ts, um, kind of behind why I choose different uh, ingredients in my recipes. Now, the, the whole purpose of this is to decrease inflammation. So um, when your body, your, um, your immune system, when it gets triggered, it um, triggers your immune response. And that's how your body keeps away viruses and diseases and helps to heal if you've been injured. The problem is a lot of these foods um, make that immune response hyperactive, and you have your immune system ramped up way too high for way too long, and then it starts damaging your cells. So this whole foods, plant-based, mostly raw diet, is, um, is intended to reduce all that inflammation so that your cells can function properly and heal properly. The second thing this diet does is it alkalizes your body. Um, if you have a very acidic environment in your body, 
That invites pathogens like viruses and bacteria and yeast to grow really fast in your body. If you have an alkaline environment, it subdues cancer, it subdues all sorts of diseases, and it makes your body a lot healthier. Um, it also, this, uh, this diet, um, not necessarily the desserts we're doing today, but the diet in general, it lowers your blood sugar and your blood glucose, so it makes you less susceptible to diseases like diabetes and other metabolic disorders. It also eliminates toxins. So, so most of the food you get in the grocery store is full of toxins. Anything that's processed in a package or a bottle or a can, it's got many, many toxins in it. Some of the things I've talked about before and other things like plastic toxins that are leached into your food from the packaging or preservatives. Um, this diet eliminates those toxins so your liver is not so burdened getting all those toxins out of your body that you're eating in your food every day. And then your liver can concentrate on, you know, getting everything else out of your body that's toxic and your body can heal a lot faster. And we also want to optimize our nutrients. So that's, remember when I talked earlier about nutrition density? What we want to do is get the maximum amount of nutrients in per calorie that we can. And by getting all of those fresh, live, whole plant food nutrients, we're going to be able to heal faster and, and create a healthier body. So that's, base, that's the basic philosophy behind my recipe choices here. What I'm doing today is Christmas foods or holiday foods that are good for desserts. I have people coming to me all the time and they're like, okay, this is great, this whole idea of eating healthy, but what do I do about desserts? What do I do when I need something sweet? What do I do when I need to go to a family party and I need to bring a dessert? So I've picked um, a dessert that I think is really fabulous. It's a, it's a down south treat called Bananas Foster, and I'm going to put it into a crepe. And the reason why this is so cool is, first of all, most of the time, Banana Foster is made with um, ice cream, which is dairy and sugar and usually some kind of hydrogenated or vegetable oil. It's also made out of um, caramel, which is made out of lots of sugar and also rum and um, uh, banana liqueur. So there's lots of things in there that aren't necessarily great for your health, but they taste delicious. So I've recreated this banana foster recipe so that we're using whole foods, natural foods, and you can get the same taste and the same um, pleasure and sensation out of your food, but you're actually eating health foods. Now I've had people come up after the class and they've said, you know, I tasted your sample, and usually when I eat desserts or sweet things, I just feel kind of sick, but I taste your samples, and my body's just like, yay, I feel good, okay? So that's how you want to feel when you're done eating something. You want to feel good. You want to feel energized. If you feel drained or get a headache or start, you know, getting phlegmy in the back of your throat, that's indicating that your body does not like what you're eating, okay? So I want you to pay attention to, first of all, how it tastes. Second of all, how your body feels after you're done eating it. And third of all, just like, you know, could I exchange this healthy version for the unhealthy stuff that I've been eating and still feel satisfied and still feel great about, about um, you know, <laughs> eating something yummy? So let's start out with, um, <clears throat> let's start out with the ice cream first. Uh, now, instead of using dairy in this vanilla ice cream, we're going to use a base of raw cashews. Now, um, when you soak raw cashews overnight, they get really soft, so they can get really creamy. If you don't soak them, it just won't turn out as creamy. So soak these babies overnight, and what that does is it makes them soft, and then it also dissolves all the phytic acid and the enzyme inhibitors that are on the outside of those nuts, makes them more digestible, and it improves the nutrient content when you um, start to soak or germinate a nut or seed. The next thing we're going to use instead of dairy is some coconut milk. Now, I love using coconut milk because it gives it the same, let's see, it gives it the same creamy texture and just a yummy taste to it, but then you don't get the dairy. It kind of fools you into thinking that you're eating dairy when you're not. I'm also going to use some raw local honey. Now, raw local honey is, thank you. Thanks. Raw local honey is my um, preferred sweetener, uh, mainly because in many countries, local honey is used as a tonic. It helps to heal your stomach. It helps to, um, it's, a, it's a soothing agent and a healing agent. It also helps with seasonal allergies. It helps to boost your immune system. And it's, a, it's 
more sweet than sugar, so you can actually use less honey than you would use of sugar and get the same sweetness. I'm um, also going to use some coconut oil. This is raw virgin coconut oil that's not been heat treated. When you buy a coconut oil, you, most coconut oil out there has been heat processed and deodorized, meaning they've taken that coconut smell out of it. And when they've heat treated it and processed it like that, it's not good for you anymore. If you want all the nutrient benefits of the lauric acid and the medium chain triglycerides and all the other nutritious properties that are in coconut oil, you need to have it so that it's virgin, cold pressed, and not heat treated. And you need it to definitely be non-deodorized. I've also put a, some vanilla in here. If we're going to make vanilla ice cream, we've got to put a lot of vanilla in, of course. Now make sure when you're picking a vanilla, read the label very carefully. Most vanillas have propylene glycol or corn syrup or extenders or preservatives in there. Um, when you read the back of the label, make sure that it just says vanilla and alcohol or glycerin, whatever it's been extracted with. And then we've got some natural salt. When you choose a salt, make sure that it's colored. So you can get like gray Celtic sea salt or this pink Redmond salt. When it has a color to it, that means that all the minerals haven't been stripped out of it and it hasn't been heated at a really high temperature and sterilized and you've still got some good mineral content. Your body can just metabolize it a lot better than the highly processed salt. So that's it. Do you guys think this will actually make a vanilla ice cream? What do you think? For the people that have been here before, they're like, yeah, you can do it. I wouldn't have believed you before, but we believe you now. Okay. Oh, I just have to do a little commercial for the Vitamix. I use this every day, three, four times a day. It does everything. It grinds grain into flour. It liquefies all your fruits and vegetables. I make smoothies in it. It makes your sauces very smooth and creamy. So if I take nuts and turn them into a faux dairy product, you, don't, you can't even tell that it's not dairy because it gets it that smooth. You can do this in a regular blender. It just won't get as smooth and it won't get as creamy and things will just be a little chunkier. The Vitamix, um, they carry them at Orson Gigi. We've got one over there. Um, but if you can make one investment in your health, just one thing to put in your kitchen to invest in your health, this is the number one product that I would recommend. I can't do without it. Mine finally broke after like 10 years of me seriously abusing it several times a day. And we went for like a month without it. And I about went crazy in my kitchen without my Vitamix for a month. So um, highly recommend you checking that out. There's also another brand called Blend Tech um, that you can check that out as well. Those work as well. Now the other thing the Vitamix does is it will, if you leave it on for like three or four minutes, it will boil whatever's in here. There's so much friction from the high speed motor that it'll boil it. So you just got to be careful when you use it not to leave it on too long or whatever you have in there will get steaming hot and boil within just a few minutes. Which is a cool thing if you're making soup or pudding or something that needs to be heated up. Um, but just be careful of it if it's cool. Now uh, all my recipes are just meant to be used as a starting point. I know, you, I know everyone's on a different place on the spectrum of like how healthy are you eating, where are you in your progression. So generally if you're coming off the standard American diet, you like your, your things to taste sweeter and saltier because that's just what your taste buds are used to. After you've been eating healthy and you start appreciating the taste of just real food and fresh fruits and vegetables, your need for all that salt and sugar decreases a lot. So my recipes, I put them like somewhere in the middle. So you can start out with the base recipe and then taste it. See if it needs a little extra salt or see if it needs a little extra honey for sweetener, or a little extra vanilla. You can tailor these recipes to work for you. Um, just make sure you taste it before you finish it off. Mm, yummy. Okay, so it's very good and it's very smooth and very creamy. And all I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to pour it into the ice cream maker. 20 minutes later, it's done. 
and you've got some delicious vanilla ice cream that nobody's going to believe you if you tell them there's no dairy in there at all. Okay, you guys are going to get a sample pretty soon, and I'm sure you're going to love it. All right, any questions about the ice cream? Oops. This ice cream maker rocks, by the way. I love it. This little tumbler, you just throw that in your freezer and leave it there, and then when you're ready for ice cream, pull it out of your freezer, and it's got some gel in there, and you just pull it out of your freezer, dump it in there. 20 minutes later, you've got ice cream. When you're done with it, throw it back in your freezer, and it's ready again. So you don't have ice, you don't have salt, you don't have the mess, you don't have to wait. It's just ready for you all the time. So that's over there, too, if you want to take a look at that. Okay, so first step of Bananas Foster is the vanilla ice cream. The second step is, is the caramel sauce. Now, generally, when you make the caramel sauce with Bananas Foster, you start with butter, and then you add lots of sugar, and then you add rum, and then you add banana liqueur, and then I think that's it, a little bit of salt. So we're going to make this healthy style, and I think you guys are going to be really impressed. Um, when we were making this at home, we made the caramel, and we were just like dumping it on our fingers, and we're like, wow, that really tastes like caramel, and it looks like caramel, and it pours like caramel. So this is pretty impressive stuff. We're just going to take some um, raw agave nectar. You can also use raw local honey. And you can mix this by hand, but it just gets a little bit creamier if you make it in the blender. I'm also going to use some coconut cream concentrate. Now this is um, coconut, I'll just so to explain the different coconut products. Coconut milk is they take the whole coconut and grate it and press all the milk out of it and then add water and put it in a can. That's your coconut milk. Your coconut oil is they grate the coconut, press all the oil out of it, and then they've got the dry powder left over that's not the oil, it's the protein. So coconut oil is just the oil pressed out of the coconut. This is kind of like halfway in between. So they take the coconut, grate it, squeeze all the milk out of it, and then but they leave the fat in there. And so this is a mixture of like coconut milk and fat, and it's just kind of like um, uh, it, it's uh, it's creamier. It's, so it's not so fatty and oily as the coconut oil, but it's thicker and denser than the coconut milk. So I like using it for the caramel because it, it's a uh, after you leave it in the jar for a little while, it gets powdery, kind of like powdered milk, and you can just dump it in there a little bit like powdered milk. Uh, we're going to put in a pinch of salt and some vanilla. And Banana Foster also has cinnamon in it, so we're going to throw in some cinnamon. And here we go with our caramel sauce. That's easy, right? Like, how easy was that caramel sauce? You guys are going to love it. Again, taste it. Now, normally when I make, if I'm just making regular plain caramel sauce, I put a little bit more salt and less cinnamon in there. But, but for Bananas Foster, that's pretty amazing. I just put it in a little squirty bottle so that we can put it on your samples for you. Oh, can you grab me a spatula? Thank you. And there is your beautiful caramel sauce. What do you guys think? Pretty easy, right? Now, just a note about plastics. Anytime you put fat into something, so oils, coconut, anything with fat in it, fat is a solvent, so that means it dissolves things. Whenever you have a fat in plastic, it will dissolve, the fat will dissolve the plastic into the fat. So, for these little things, we do it short term just so we can dump it on your stuff. But anytime you have fat in something, I would store it in glass, not plastic. Okay, just be aware of that. Um, your, all of your plastic chemicals that are in plastics, um, they can be leached into your food when you freeze foods, when you cook foods, when you put them in plastic and just like leave them there for a long time. Um, those are the times when your plastic is actually getting into your food, and you don't want to do that. Anytime your, um, your plastics contain um, xenoestrogens, and estrogen is what stimulates cancer growth. And so anytime you have lots of plastic toxins in your food, your cancer risk goes up. Also, it's just very toxic, and your liver has a hard time getting all those toxins out of your body. So there's many, uh, there's quite a few diseases that are linked 
with plastic toxins being in our food. So you just want to be really careful about that. All right, the next part of this, oh, we're going to make a little treat here, actually. So instead of just plain bananas foster, which is usually uh, ice cream, bananas, caramel sauce, we're going to turn this into a crepe. And a lot of people that come to my classes uh, need to be dairy-free, gluten-free, sugar-free. So these crepes are gluten-free, made out of buckwheat, and um, also sugar-free and dairy-free. Yes, there's a question over there. Um, well, it's just loud. So we have some ice cream made for you in the back, okay? And that, that was just showing you how to put it in the machine. It's coming. Don't worry. You'll get, you'll get your... Oh, you have it. How do you like it? Is it good? Hey. Okay. So here's how we do our gluten-free crepes. And I think you'll agree with me that this is a really good treat. Now, you can do this recipe without eggs. In my getting started guide, there's a page that has like, you know, 10 or 12 different egg substitutes. Like for instance, you can soak flax seeds and blend them up. A couple tablespoons of that, you can replace it with an egg. Um, arrowroot powder, there's like, uh, there's quite a few egg replacers. So um, if you don't want to use eggs, just go to my getting started guide, check out what you can do for an egg replacer and put that in instead. If um, you do use eggs, Remember how I said factory farmed animal products have lots and lots of toxins, antibiotics, hormones, lots of stuff you don't want to be eating. So if you are eating animal products, uh, the experts recommend, number one, keeping it below 10% of your daily intake. So if you've got a 2,000 calorie diet and you want to stay healthy and reduce your risk of cancer and diabetes and chronic illness, you need to keep your, your animal products below 200 calories. So that's 10% of your 2,000 calories. You can do the math for whatever your body weight and calorie needs are. Um, but any time you go above that 10%, your risk for chronic illness and cancer goes up pretty quickly. So um, keeping it at 5 to 10% of grass-fed, organic, um, naturally raised animal products, less than 10% per day, that's going to keep you the healthiest. Um, so we've got some organic free range, all that kind of stuff, eggs here, not factory farmed, um, or your egg substitutes. And most of my recipes, probably 98% of my recipes are completely vegan. They have no animal products in them at all. There's a couple baking recipes, like I have a waffle recipe and a pancake recipe and the crepe recipe, that for me, it just works out a little better if I put eggs in it. So I use them, but it's, you know, 90 98% of my recipes don't use any animal products at all. So if you're wondering about my other recipes, I probably have a total of six recipes in all my 20 recipe books that have an egg or two in them, and that's the only animal products I use. So uh, I get that question a lot. We're going to put in a little bit of raw local honey or agave nectar. Now, I've had people tell me um, that these crepes are so good, like they don't even want to put anything in the middle. They just want to eat them plain because they're so yummy. So that's an option as well, some vanilla. This is uh, coconut oil. Now, coconut oil, it gets it, um, its melting point is 76 degrees. So if it's above 76 degrees, it'll be a liquid. And if it's below, it'll be a solid. Um, that was arrowroot powder. That just helps it to stick a little bit because we're doing it gluten-free. Salt. And this is buckwheat flour. If you have a Vitamix, you can just go buy buckwheat groats at the health food store in the bulk department. Stick them in the blender, and it'll make a really nice buckwheat flour for you. Um, or you can buy pre-ground buckwheat flour at the store. Uh, the thing with flours is they once, once the kernel of the grain has been broken, the nutrient value decreases really quickly. So once you grind a grain, you need to either use it or freeze it within 24 hours, or basically you've just got a lot of carbohydrates and fiber that, you, that don't have any nutrient value in them. So if you're, I, I recommend getting the buckwheat, putting it in the blender, putting it in a wheat grinder, and just grinding it yourself and using it right away. That's going to be the healthiest option. Um, if you can't do that, just you know, do what you can. And we're going to turn this on or blend. Oh, we forgot the water. Where'd it go? Thanks. Thank you. Oops. 
All right, and can I just, no, I don't have a measuring cup. I'll take this measuring cup. Thank you. Okay. We're going to do, I forget how much water, we're going to pre-pour this. Two cups of water. <laughs> no wonder it wasn't turning out very well. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Um, buckwheat is non-gluten. It's actually not even a grain. It's a seed. And so it has no gluten in it. And it's got tons of healthy properties in it. It's very high in minerals, B vitamins, and um, it's, uh, it's got a lot of healing properties to it. It's from the, it's in the cruciferous family. It's a seed that's like related to cabbage and kale. So it's a really good, really awesome grain. Or not grain, that's a seed. <laughs> that's it so you'll notice all of my recipes they take five ten minutes or less to make them so these are super easy super simple super quick you don't have to spend your entire day in the kitchen it's just pretty quick now the crepe batter it needs to sit for a little while so I'd recommend letting it sit for an hour or two just put it in the fridge and what that does is all the fiber in the buckwheat soaks up the water and it just makes them a smoother texture and they stick together a lot better than if you just make them right away. So you take this, put it in the fridge, take a crepe pan, and for those of you that don't know how to make crepes, it's really watery, kind of like a really thin pancake batter. You dump it in your, in your crepe pan, you twirl it until it hits all the edges, and then you just let it um, cook till it's dry and then flip it over. So um, with crepes, the way I do it is you can make these ahead of time. So you can make a whole stack of crepes. When you stack them on the plate, put little pieces of wax paper or parchment between them, and then you can throw them in the freezer, and they're ready for later. Um, the recipe book that I'm selling today, it's called Healthy Holiday Brunch Buffet, and it has um, 20 or more recipes of savory crepes and sweet crepes that you can make. And like for New Year's morning or Christmas morning, when you want something that's really fancy but also healthy, you can put out this crepe buffet and you make a whole stack of crepe shells, put them on one end, and then I've got some sauces and creams and fillings that you can put inside of the crepes. And you just make a buffet of several different kinds of those fillings. And then people can go along, take their crepe shell, and fill it up with either fruits or vegetables or puddings or creams or sauces. And it makes for a really, really festive holiday brunch that people can serve themselves up and it doesn't necessarily have to be a sit-down meal. It could. Um, this also makes really great breakfast or a really great snack or a really great dessert. So in the recipe book today, we've got all of these recipe books that I'm talking about, or recipes that I'm talking about today, plus like 20 or more different kinds of crepes that you can use for your holiday. Um, so for the crepes, when I make pancakes or bread products, um, you really can't avoid going over a certain temperature. So the, my, most of my recipes are high raw, meaning as many things as I can make raw are not cooked, so they're kept below 105 degrees. There's some things like waffles or pancakes or crepes that unless you have a dehydrator and you want to make the dehydrated version of it, um, you have to cook it. So um, my waffles, pancakes, crepes, those are just cooked regularly, but they're made from whole fresh foods. So you still got the nutrient content. Okay, so to make this crepe, we just put on the bananas, and then we're going to put on some caramel sauce. Fold it over like so. And then top it off with a beautiful scoop of ice cream. Well, maybe not so beautiful because that's not a good ice cream scoop. Um, and then a little bit more caramel sauce on top of that. Now this makes a perfect, because it's so nutrient dense, um, great breakfast, great snack, great dessert, great buffet item. So we've got this recipe and lots of others in the cookbook. I froze it in a pan like this. The advantage of having an ice cream maker is it kind of aerates the ice cream so it comes out like fluffier and smoother. If you do it in a pan, sometimes it gets a little crystallized and it's not so smooth and fluffy. So um, 
I do it in the pan all the time, but depending on what kind you make, like if you're making a sorbet like with lots of fruit in it and water content, it's better to use the ice cream maker or else it gets really icy, but with super creamy stuff like this, this works as well too. Okay, what do you guys think? Beautiful? Tastes good? Yeah. You can let back in the freezer. Thanks. All right, let's see if we can get one more recipe in for today. I also want to show you how to make some really good appetizers. So the, the holidays are a great time just to have food sitting around and just so you can kind of walk by and graze on it. Like that's pretty typical holiday food, right? Just having a counter full of cookies or appetizers. And um, I want to show you some healthy whole food um, appetizers that you can just have sitting around to benefit your health. One sec. Okay, this is actually three recipes in one, but, oh, can I have the blenders back, please? And the tampers. Okay, so this is actually three recipes in one. All of these recipes are in the Healthy Holiday Buffet recipe book, but I'm going to show you how you can use these recipes for things other than crepes, okay? So these can be used like as dips, as sauces, just on their own, for vegetables, for crackers. You can use them in a lot of different ways, or you can stick them on crepes, whatever works best for you. I'll just, um, I'll do something else while they're coming with the blender. Oh, you know what? Actually, I can't. So hold on. I'm waiting for them to come back with the blender, and then we'll get started. Any questions while we're waiting? Yes? Um, can you use your black bread and butter and the onion? Is it a separate dish? Um, it should have just happened automatically. You should have gone through the sale process. Uh, and and Uh-huh. <laughs> and it didn't come? OK, email me. and OK, email me, and I'll help you with that. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. OK. Now, one thing that abounds during the holidays is cream cheese. Like, cream cheese is my nemesis during the holidays because all the yummy recipes have cream cheese in them. And if I eat dairy, I get really sick. So I'm going to show you guys how to make an amazing cream cheese that's made out of cashews. It's dairy-free, and you're, you'll never believe that it's not made out of dairy. So we'll start out with some soaked cashews. Again, I soaked them overnight. And all we're going to put in here is a little bit of salt, some lemon, oops, not lemon, that was uh, nutritional yeast, some lemon, and I've got some probiotics in here. Uh, I teach a different class called Probiotics for Perfect Health, and it teaches you how to add healthy bacteria or healthy probiotics into lots of the food you eat. So we're actually going to culture this cream cheese so it has the same positive benefits as yogurt or other cultured foods. And um, we'll, we'll make it really easy. Um, let's see, where did I put my water? Now when you use a Vitamix, you got to, um, the cool thing I like about the Vitamix is it's got this tamper. And this makes it so you can blend something that's really thick, and normally it, the thick stuff wouldn't go down into the blades. But with the tamper, you can jam it down into the blades so you can blend things that are a lot thicker than normal. Yes? Oh, good question. The question was, why did you drain the water off the cashews and then add more water? The answer is I soak the cashews for two reasons. One of the reasons is to remove the phytic acid and the enzyme inhibitors off the outside so they're more digestible. So all that water had all those dissolved enzyme inhibitors and phytic acid and all that stuff I'm trying to soak off. So I dumped off the soak water, and then I'm adding fresh water to make the food with. Otherwise, it, otherwise you're like still eating all those enzyme inhibitors that you're trying to get rid of if you use the soak water. OK? Any other questions? 
Now, uh, Vitamix comes with a seven-year warranty, so a lot of people, they, tr they try to um, use this like a regular blender, like they turn it on, and they're like, okay, baby, let's go. And um, with Vitamix, it comes with a really good warranty. It's got a really good motor, and so you don't have to be afraid to be kind of rough with it. So I'm just going to show you how I do it at home. And um, when people see me do this for the first time, they're like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing to your blender? But this is how you make it work, all right? Okay, so that was loud and it sounded kind of scary, but what you've got in the end is, see how creamy that is? That's really smooth and it's really creamy, just like cream cheese. Um, we're going to take the probiotic, and I just take a probiotic capsule from the store, and I just break it up into there. You can use any kind of probiotic you want. Um, I put it in after it's been blended because you don't want to damage all the bacteria. You don't want to damage it with the blender or with heat. So I'm just going to stick that in there, give it a little stir. And then we've got some yummy cream cheese all ready to go. OK, we're going to set this aside and do the next portion of our recipe. Thank you. Yes. Um, walnuts work really well as far as the texture. The question was, what if you're allergic to cashews? Is there another nut you can use? Um, you can use walnuts. They're nice and soft, and they give a smooth texture, but they also, they're not quite as white, so you'll get a little bit of a brown color. You can also use macadamia nuts, which are nice and white, but they are more gritty, so you'll have a, like, more of a ricotta cheese texture than a smooth cream cheese texture. If you're allergic to all nuts, you can use seeds like um, sesame, or sorry, sunflower seeds and soak those and use those. And they don't have as much of a neutral flavor as cashews, but they work just as well. Yes? I get mine through a, the question is, um, where do I get my nuts because they're so expensive? Nutty Guys has a group order a couple times a year. And you can get your nuts for like 50% off if you buy them in bulk. So usually I buy my nuts like once or twice a year in big five-pound bags and store them in the refrigerator or the freezer. And that way it's about half price of what you get them for at the store. If you just want to buy small portions, I recommend going to the health food store like Good Earth and go to their bulk bin section. And that's usually less expensive getting it that way than getting them prepackaged like at the grocery store. Yes, yeah, all nuts, seeds, beans, grains, they all have those phytic acids or enzyme inhibitors on the outside. So for your, to maximize your, the nutrient properties, you want to soak all of those things before you use them. Um, it depends on what you're making. Like, for instance, cashews are pretty soft, so you can soak them as little as four hours, but the softer you want them, the longer you soak them. So um, like almonds, for instance, are harder. So I usually always soak almonds overnight, like 12 hours or something. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? OK. OK, thank you. Um, the question was about salt. Where do you find colored salt, and what does it look like? Um, the two kinds that I use are called either Celtic gray sea salt, and that just has like a grayish color to it, or Redmond salt, um, that's pink, and you can get both of those just at any health food store. Good Earth carries them for sure. Okay? All right. Let's make some yummy dip out of this. Um, it depends on how it's been processed, and that's the answer for most foods, you know. Is it healthy for me? Depends on how, you, how it's been processed. If you just get regular, plain old iodized salt at the store, it's been processed like at 1,200 degrees, so it's been highly heat treated. It's been processed and bleached, so like all the nutrients have basically been taken out of it, okay? So the whiter it is generally, and this is for flour or for, you know, for most food products, the whiter or less colorful it is, the less healthy it is for you. 
The more colorful it is, the healthier it is for you, generally speaking, and the less refined. So you just want to get something that has been refined as little as possible and has the most color possible. Um, and those are the two kinds of salt that I know of that have not been refined very much. It is a sea salt, yes. So it comes from the same place, but it's just a matter of how has it been processed. Has it been, you know, has it been heat treated? Has all the nutrients and minerals been taken out of it, or is it left in its original state? Um, okay. All right, what we're going to make here is a really great dip. Now, this can go in a crepe with, like, fresh apples or fresh spinach. It's also great as a dip on a vegetable platter or a fruit platter. Um, it's great for like a cracker topping, or something like that. So there's lots of different ways you can use this dip. And the cool part is it's totally raw, so nothing's been cooked. And it's got lots of, the, the nuts make it so it has lots of healthy fats and lots of mineral content in there. We've also, we're also going to put some walnuts in here and some dried cranberries. Now these dried cranberries, they are not, most dried cranberries are sweetened with sugar, and these are sweetened with apple juice. I got these at Good Earth, and so they've, they've got no sugar in them, which is great. And a little bit of raw local honey. So this makes like a really sweet cream cheese sauce that I think you're gonna love. Um, oh, there's another blender over there, great. Okay, you want to leave it so it's still a little bit chunky, not completely smooth. All right. Did you guys taste it? How did you like it? It's good? Now, the question is, could you tell that it wasn't made out of dairy cream cheese? No? Yay. Okay, so what do we've got? We've got it's nutrient dense, it's delicious, it's easy. You can't tell that it's not the real thing. All of those make it so it's a great um, dish to serve to your families and friends. Not only do we want to make our own bodies healthier, but we also want to make the bodies of our families healthier. And I get people asking me all the time, well, how do I get my husband to eat it? Or how do I get my kids to eat it? And my answer is, if it tastes so fabulous and they can't even tell that it's healthy, don't tell them. Just sneak it to them. Okay? Just make the healthy stuff. Sneak it in there. And if, if it tastes that good, they're not going to know and they're not going to care. Okay? Okay. So we're done with that. And then for the dressing on the side, the other day I was at, um, I was just looking through my fridge. I had a bunch of greens. I needed to make a salad dressing for dinner. And I had a bag of cranberries in my fridge. And I was like, okay, what can I do with these? So I made this salad dressing recipe up the other day. And it tasted so good, I want to share it with you. All you do is take a bag of cranberries, 12 ounces. And we're going to throw in a little bit of orange juice. This is just like um, the orange juice concentrate. Some onion. Now this is sweet onion. There's a bunch of kinds of onions. You can get the yellow kind, the red kind, or the sweet kind. The sweet onions, they don't have that um, bite to them that like kind of hurts your tongue a little bit. So you want to put sweet onions in here unless you don't care about the after bite of regular raw onions. And we're going to put in a little tiny bit of chipotle. This is just... Um, pre-cooked chipotle. And start with a little bit, because if you put in too much at the beginning, you'll be sorry later. This is some tamari, which is a healthy soy sauce. Most soy sauce has MSG and gluten and all sorts of junk in there that you don't want to be eating. If you pick a gluten-free, low-salt tamari, which they have at the health food store at Good Earth, um, then you can be having the soy sauce flavor without the MSG and the chemicals and all the extra salt and the gluten. This is some maple syrup. This is 100% organic maple syrup. And again, with maple syrup and everything else, if you can get it organic, it's going to be a lot better for you than if you don't get it organic. This is a little bit of crushed garlic and a little bit of black pepper. Now, cranberries are really amazing for you. They have a property in them that um, makes it so bacteria can't bind to your bladder. So if you're prone to bladder infections, 
or kidney infections and you drink um, fresh cranberry juice or you're eating fresh cranberries, that will make it so um, the bacteria can't stick to your bladder and your kidneys and you're going to have healthier bladders and kidneys. Fresh onions and fresh garlic are cruciferous vegetables. They're really great at fighting cancer, lowering your blood pressure, and they have all sorts of great health benefits. They're antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. Black pepper helps to heal up your stomach lining, and it also um, gives things a flavor that makes it so you need to put less salt in it. Um, and orange juice, um, if you can use fresh orange juice with this, it's going to be healthier for you than the canned orange juice. It just makes it more watery, so you need to decide if you want to go for the, um, the, the consistency or the health properties with this. You can, um, the fresh is healthier, the frozen is a little more convenient, and it makes it a little bit thicker. I think part of holiday food is the color and the presentation. So anytime you can make things that are brightly colored with reds and greens in them, it makes it more appetizing, makes it more festive looking. And also remember how I said the brighter the color is, the more antioxidants and the more nutrients you've got in that food. So this is a very antioxidant rich, high nutrient salad dressing. And if you combine this, this is great just on greens. Like I put a plate of greens with avocados sliced on there and some um, just whatever vegetables I've got handy and put this on. It makes a really, really yummy, fat-free, totally healthy salad dressing. In this case, what I'm going to do with it is put it on a vegetable platter or a fruit platter. So if I was at home, I would slice up some apples and some celery. And I need a knife. Trina, can I have a knife, please? Thanks. Um, if I was home, I'd slice up apples and celery. I've got some little peppers you can fill with it. And, or crackers, there's lots of things you can do with this. Um, or you can put it in the middle of a crepe with some apple slices or some spinach in there and it's really, really delicious in any of those ways. Also, anytime you can use a salad dressing or a dip to improve your vegetable intake of the day, <laughs> that totally helps. So I find that if I have just plain vegetable tray out on the table, like nobody really eats a lot of it, but if I have the vegetable tray with a bunch of yummy dips, then people are just digging in. You can take the basic cream cheese recipe that I did at first, thank you, and you can add um, you can add any kind of flavor you want. Like some of my favorite flavors are a lemon thyme. So you take that basic cream cheese recipe and you add some fresh thyme and some lemon and some salt and some pepper. That makes a really good dip. You can do like a basil chipotle dip. You can add, there's so many flavors you can add to that basic cream cheese to make it different flavors. So keep that in mind as well. This makes for a really fun appetizer tray at a party. You can also, if you have a dehydrator, like if you're going completely raw food and you have a dehydrator, another thing I like to do is take vegetables like zucchini and what you do is you um, just slice it, put it on the dehydrator tray and you can sprinkle a little salt on there if you like and it makes little vegetable chips. So then you can have a bowl of vegetable chips with the dip and it makes for a really yummy, um, uh, like a really good option instead of having your store-bought crackers or grainy crackers that have like gluten in them, you can have your vegetable crackers. That works out well. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can also turn on your oven to the lowest temperature possible and um, just put them on a baking tray, put whatever your vegetable chips, you can do it with like sweet potatoes or yams or, or um, like I said, zucchini. Put that on the baking tray in the oven at the lowest temperature possible and then you just uh, leave them in there until they're nice and crispy. So you can do that if you don't have a dehydrator. So here's a couple ideas what you can do with vegetables. Take your salad dressing and like that and you know use your imagination, whatever you want to do. And again, these recipes are basic. Um, you can start with this, add more salt, add more pepper, add less chipotle, do whatever you want with it to make it yours, to make it work for you. <laughs>